March the 10th, 2019. Guys, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, and uh, I've never been able to get down into uh, South America and actually visit where these, what they call H-stones are. This is Puma Punte, and you've got that. You've got two and uh, Naku down there. We've seen it uh, on the Discovery Channel, uh, different videos with uh, a very good YouTuber, Brian Forrester, has gone down. And this these stones were set back up. Everything, when they first discovered this plateau, they was it looked like it had been hit by a nuclear bomb. And if, for any of you who have ever studied any of the Sumerian texts, both the, the uh, translations and from folks like Zachariah Stitchin, even though some people don't agree with him, I think that he was way ahead of his time. But uh, here in this city, you also have the gate to the sun, and it's got about 60 astronauts that are on this wall. And it was the gate to this location, which I think with this heavy blocking, these heavy, huge stones, they were meant to uh, carry an, or hold up an extremely heavy object. Zachariah Stitchin mentioned the Gate of the Sun. They, he mentioned the Egyptian uh, Sumerian technology that had been spread around the world, especially Sumeria. And when you go in and the folks have measured these sites here, to, again, Tiwanaka and Pumapunte, that they are in Egyptian and Sumerian measurements and in cubits. That's what they're t talking about. Now, again, the stones have a history of precision cutting. The, some of the walls you see around the world, some of the ancient structures, they say you can't even put a razor blade in between them. Now, I've never been able to travel down here or even to Egypt. But there's always been something that I wanted to do and uh, I couldn't. And I'm glad someone finally did it because, guys, if you've been around construction a lot, these don't look like they're hand carved. Who, what kind of boring life would this be? Because there's many other stones that are carved or are set like this. But, guys, there's new information coming out. The publication will be in one of the science magazines. And they went in and they did a sample of these rocks. And again, they're saying you, you can't even put a razor blade in between them, but these have all been set back up. But in some of the stone walls from around the world, you can see the same thing there. And even if the stones are not perfect squares or whatever, you can't. There's no mortar joints, but you can't put anything in there. Guys, but have you ever noticed that all of these structures, the building material is the same color, like concrete? I've been all over the U.S., seen rocks in Colorado and Sedona, Arizona, and the Smokies and the Rockies, and uh, they change in color. There's a grain and even marble, even quartz. It doesn't matter. And I've always thought that th all of this, all of these ancient monolithic giant structures, not everyone, but a majority of them, and again, these measurements go back to Egypt, if you know what I'm talking about. These were poured concrete polymers. Now, I want to show you a quick report. Just hang in there with me. And again, this is one of the reasons uh, that I haven't done a lot of videos on these sites. Now, we did do one in 2013 when we were going through the Sumerian text on the Gate of the Sun there in uh, South America. But this is a publication called Ceramics International. It's a science publication, guys. Notice the timestamp at the top, April 15th, 2019. You say, whoa, that hadn't happened yet. No, the magazine doesn't come out yet until April 15th. But this report came out that's going to be part of that magazine on December 17th. It was revised January the 3rd, and it was accepted into it again January the 3rd and online January the 4th. Now, I just found it, but it's titled, and there's a PDF uh, file there also, guys, but it says uh, Ancient Organomineral Geopolymer in South American Monuments, Organic Matter in Andesite Stone, SEM, and Petrographic Evidence. It says... It, this is brief. Uh, the magazine's going to have a lot more information. But it says a recent study has shown the presence of artificial construction materials in pre-Columbian monuments at Pumapunka and Tiwanaka. 
Bolivia, in addition to ancient geopolymer sandstone concrete megalithic slabs. Guys, it has amazed me since a kid watching the shows on the pyramids and Puma Punque and all of these different uh, ancient sites and saying that those are not rocks. There's no grain. There's no in, in this, I'm talking about 75 or 80 percent of these giant stone ancient monoliths. And the ones with the largest stones were meant to support a very heavy object. Now, the study of this great andesite shows the presence of organic matter, carbon, nitrogen, and minerals. And they're listed here. Organic matter is very unusual, if not impossible, in a solid volcanic stone and suggests ceramic like man made stone. Our research demonstrates that this architectural components manufactured 1400 years ago were fashioned with a type of organo mineral precursor, ancient concrete. Now they didn't, I guess, maybe some of the earlier explorers knew this by looking at it. But if you've been in the construction business and we'll look at a couple of these other stones, you can obviously tell these are not rocks. And if you look at this picture, again, Puma Punta, this is a poured slab, guys. Forever, they've been saying that th the people that built this 1,400 years ago, they think, carry these huge, massive stones from well away from here down in the plains, not up at this elevation. They did not. This is poured. L let me just show you a couple more images. All of these interlocked. But, guys, you can tell that uh this was poured it was not carved they didn't and that again that's been part of the mystery what kind of high tech cutting technology did they have nothing they just they simply had the ability to mix the ingredients and pour this and let it harden all of these different rocks and the key locks at uh, puma punta were poured they were meant to make extremely strong walls and extremely strong uh, slabs it was the center of what they're saying a population of about 300,000 that was a very heavily agricultural area at that time people have called it a port and that has been taken out of context and they're saying well it's too high elevation all of this but guys in the ancient Sumerian it wasn't talking about an ocean port it was talking about a space port and if you look into the Middle East at some of these locations to where the fall, to where the fallen angels came down, look at those huge stones. A lot of them are not grained, not every stone, but a lot of the larger structures have been poured. That explains all of this. A couple more. In these pictures, this was back in uh, 2013, there at Puma Punta. And guys, these are poured block stones look at this it looks like concrete masonry stones they you don't have to have super heat to do this you have to have the ability to mix get the ingredients mix them together let it cure that's why look on the stone there's no grain in the rocks look at some of the ancient stones around the world again let's look at some that appear to be odd shaped check this out it's also down in that area guys these were poured blocks set in place they didn't use mortar that's why they can't you can't get a razor blade in it because it was perfectly poured what you want to call ancient concrete or polymer rocks think about what i'm saying this makes this puts a whole new perspective on some of the most ancient including the pyramids including some of the sumerian uh, sites in Iraq and Iran. Now, in this article, it's called Tiwanaka Cubits and Measuring Units. And it looks at uh, the different structures there. They put the measuring on them, um, measuring tape, measured out everything, and discovered that they were dealing with Sumerian and Egyptian cubits, not normal measurements. You can read the entire thing, but I'll point out something. Now, this may be a little hard to read, but this are some of the drawings from back then. This was a long time ago. But the author is saying, when I visited the Akapana Pyramid in Tiwanaka with Freddie Art of the Tiwanaka Institute, 
Freddy had told me the dimensions of the pyramid, which is in fact a sort of T-shaped, and it is. One side, he said, was 200 meters, 688.9 feet. He said, I pulled out my pocket calculator as that number sounded familiar. A quick analysis showed that 210 meters was 400 Egyptian royal cubits, or one Egyptian royal stadium. The other side was 194.4 meters. A quick calculation again revealed that this was 432 Egyptian geographic cubics of, 40, of 450 millimeters, or 17.7 inches. All of this math, all of the building techniques came from Samaria and from Egypt. It, and if you, again, look at some of the ancient Sumerian texts, some of the, uh, again, Zechariah Stitching, for those that uh, understand that he may have been one of the few that really had it right. But look at his information. He talked about this. He also talked about the gate of the sun. And this is it. Um, and what it is, you've got about 60 or something. I, again, I did a video in 2013. I'd have to go back, but it's supposedly 60 astronauts here, I think. Maybe 70. But uh, Stitchin mentioned it in uh, some of his books. That this, again, the gate of the sun was a port, but a space port. And this place, as a great cataclysm came on the planet, remember the stories of the flood? The great cataclysm came upon the planet. This group launched, but instead of leaving anything behind, they destroyed possibly with nuclear weapons this entire site. This is not how they found the gate of the sun. This was it. Is it if a massive explosion or a giant earthquake had broke this thing in part. And notice how far that it's buried. And guys, this is uh, at high elevations. Something cataclysmic happened on this site. And you're looking at one of the other famous areas here. And the only original part are these columns and these steps, which are heavily, heavily worn. All of these rocks were found and stacked up. Even these square molded rocks right here at the top of the steps now the statue is a little further back it's not right there but again when they found this it looked totally different and then man started to try to reconstruct what it originally looked like and we see that you know with archaeologists all around the world but you can see the steps and the two first stones and that how heavily they are worn these are old old photographs and there's drawings that go back beyond that but uh, a lot of those stones guys are really square ones were from some of the destroyed structures there. But again, guys, this puts a whole new perspective on these ancient monoliths and how they moved these huge stones from place to place. They poured them in place. Maybe they had to erect some of them or stack a few, but uh, these were poured in poly ancient polymer concrete. We're watching it, guys. You watch it. Uh, I've got an update on it. I'm looking for some other information. And I'm looking forward to getting the full article in April. So heads up. Be safe.